Hey guys! After numerous failed attempts, I'm finally doing my first video of the Brimstone Project. The channel that does stuff that you can do yourself, but that you don't have to do because I'm doing it for you. And it has to do with science. My channel is all about doing chemistry, physics, and math experiments at home with materials that are pretty easy to obtain from a store or from the web. Now I've tried to do an intro video all about my lab and the stuff I do, but I just can't come up with enough script for it. So instead, I'm going to do a pilot video where I show you an example of the kind of stuff I do. As you've noticed, I am in my pajamas right now, and I'm doing a video about science. This is because I kept pushing back my first video again and again and again, and now I am desperate to make the video. I am missing Saturday Night Live, and I love Saturday Night Live, so I'm desperate. For my first video, I'm going to show you guys about a chemical compound called peroxyacetic acid, but I'm going to call it Copper Killer, because it is super good at killing metals, like copper. All my copper is gone, though, because I had killed it all already. So today, I'm going to use vanadium in place of copper. You can get vanadium at the following URL. Check it out anytime you want. They've got every element from 1 to 83. Except for fluorine, of course. That can, uh, you can't store that in anything except pure hatred. So anyway, this copper killer stuff is pretty easy to make. And it's great at turning metals into their salts. All it is is hydrogen peroxide and vinegar mixed up in a good ratio. And is basically guaranteed to decimate any metal you put into it. But unlike a lot of acids that do that, it's also pretty safe to touch. Most of the only acids out there that can dissolve metals like copper and silver will also dissolve you. And I don't mean uranium. Peroxyacetic acid is different in that it's a powerful oxidant that will destroy metals. But if you get it on your fingers, all you have to do is rinse it off, and it's not going to cause any damage at all. I've done it to myself a bajillion times, and... I am sane, still, I think. Now the materials for this experiment are pretty easy to find. All you need is hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, a good beaker, and a test metal. The test metal I'm using for today is vanadium. Optional components are a cup or a bottle and mineral oil. And I'll tell you about that later. Now let's go make us some metal killy stuff, yay! So here's what you do. Might be a little hard to see in the camera because of the light, but I will verbally tell you what to do too. You start with the hydrogen peroxide. Yay, it says hydrogen peroxide. Just so you know, I'm not lying to you. And fill it up approximately to the 125 milliliter mark. The cool part about this is that you do not need to be exact for this to work. A lot of things you need to be pretty exact for, but this, you really don't. Just kind of eyeball it. Now, this is going on the assumption that the hydrogen peroxide is 3%. If it's 5%, then you should instead use 75 mils. And if it's another concentration, you might have to do some math, which I'll explain later. Then you need to get some white vinegar. Now, white vinegar isn't perfect because it's got impurities, but it's the most readily available, and it's got the fewest impurities of any vinegar that I know. So fill, so add this to the hydrogen peroxide until the total mixture reaches the 200 mil mark. Now remember, this doesn't have to be exact. If you're at like 202 mils, or at your, you're at 197 mils, then don't flip your flip because this is still going to work fine. The whole point of this is to mix the hydrogen peroxide and the vinegar in a 1 to 1 ratio. Now I used 3% hydrogen peroxide and 5% vinegar, so I mixed 5 parts hydrogen peroxide and 3 parts vinegar so that I could have a total where the constant or 
where the hydrogen peroxide and vinegar content of the solution is roughly equal. Now, what you need to do to um, make the solution with other concentrations of material is you need to assume that the percentages are volume to volume ratios even if you don't really know what they are and you just need to mix the hydrogen peroxide and vinegar in a way that there will be equal amounts of peroxide and vinegar. Now this is really it. I mean there's not a lot to making this stuff. There is a lot though to using this stuff. And this I will show you very soon. Right here, I've got with me a chunk of vanadium metal. Ow, my arm, sorry. Now, this metal isn't readily available because it's a pr pretty rare metal, but you will find this on the website that I've provided in this video that I will provide again. Let me start by just taking this metal and plopping it in. Now, as you can see, it's instantly reacting. The metal starts bubbling and the surface turns yellow. Well, the surface turned yellow a little bit already because of some impurities that were left from my last experiment, but it doesn't matter. It just adds to the solution that's going to be made. As I zoom in on this metal, vanadium, or if it lets me zoom in on this metal, vanadium, okay, I guess it doesn't. You can kind of sort of, there we go, you can kind of sort of see that it's bubbling quite a bit. Now, that is hydrogen gas, and it could be a little bit of oxygen gas, too. I'm not really sure, because what I've created is peroxyacetic acid which it has a formula CH3COO2H, or ACOH, which not only likes to give up hydrogen, like acetic acid does, but it also likes to give off oxygen, which hydrogen peroxide does. The combination of an acid and an oxidant makes this a very powerful acid that won't harm you, but will harm metals gladly. The reason why I listed mineral oil da, 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 it doesn't fit in the camera as an optional component is because I don't want the vapors to escape. So what I'm going to do is pour a little bit of this in to the top. Now notice it's making a little film on the top let it spread out there. Now this little film that I've created oops, wrong button. This little film that I've created on the surface of the water will stay on top and it will trap the vapors pretty well. Sorry, my camera doesn't like to focus on water. So this will trap in the vapors and it's clear but it won't interfere with the experiment. There's the metal bubbling away. Now, I don't want to keep you guys too long because this experiment with vanadium actually takes a couple of days. But this is what you get at the end. Look at that. In case the camera doesn't do it any good, this is pure black. It's green that's very, very concentrated so it looks black. Now, vena now, using vanadium as a subject of an experiment with copper killer produces a really cool result that changes color. But I don't want to show you that yet because that's going to be in another video of mine. If you want to end the experiment early, you should have some baking soda on hand. It's a very good um, base new acid neutralizer and washing soda worked well too. So I'm just gonna leave that vanadium bubbling and bubbling. This experiment along with quite a few of my other ones doesn't require a lot of safety material. I mean 
You don't want to leave it on your hands forever, but if you just rinse it off, it'll be fine. You don't need safety gloves unless you're scared, and you certainly don't need goggles or a gas mask unless you're afraid of splashing. The metal is just going to hang out in there for a couple of days. What happens with vanadium, and this is why I like to do the experiment with vanadium, is because for the first few, two days, the solution is yellow. And then for the last day, it turns green. And then, something really cool happens, but I'm not going to spoil it for you. Well, let's after midnight. I, I have quite literally made this video over a span of two days, and I should probably give it a rest now. So thank you guys for joining me for my first video. I hope you enjoy it. I'll have lots more science videos to come, all about safe science that you can do at home with easy-to-obtain material. Thank you guys for coming. And like I always say, Discamus Floriamos.